What's up guys, and welcome back to the channel for another book review. My name is Lieutenant Nathaniel Flint of the Landship Scorpius, and today we are talking about Steampunk World. Steampunk World was edited by Sarah Hans and is, has a collection of stories from all around the world. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the, uh, basically the premise of this book is to give us non-England, non-America uh, steampunk stories from all around the world, from uh, different points of view, and hopefully to broaden our uh, steampunk communities with this uh, non-England view of, uh, of steampunk. Overall, I loved this book. It is definitely a recommendation and a must read. I have not been one, I've not been very good at getting into the anthologies, uh, but lately uh, my reading pool has kind of ran out and I had to get into uh, these anthologies. And for one of the anthologies, this was amazing. There are some absolute hits there are some misses, um, however, overall, it is a very good read, a very good book to pick up and read through, so please do, please support uh, projects and books like this. Um, it was an amazing read, and I appreciate it. What I want to do now is get a little more spoilery and kind of delve into each story individually. Um, I'm not sure if this is a smart idea for my channel, but some of these stories are absolute hits, some of these are not, and I kind of want to give a synopsis of each so that uh, anyone who wants to pick up the book and read it can kind of um, get an idea of what they are, what kind of stories are behind this. Um, some of them are amazing, and I will say as such, I don't think there are any stories that are outright terrible, um, but I guess we'll see. Uh, I don't want my, like, opinions on it to be, say, whether or not you shouldn't read that story or anything. All of them should be read and experienced. As a steampunk book, this does a really good job of all the stories kind of getting a hold of all the, of steampunk, so I really think it's important to read them all. Um, and, you know, decide for yourself. Uh, if I mess up, um, I'm very sorry. I really want to go through each one. Uh, it is possible while I'm recording this that I will mess up and maybe skip a story. I am so sorry. I am going to keep a close eye on it. But if that happens, I am so sorry. Just assume you get five, five out of five stars. Um, I will not be grading them on a star base, but just assume that you get one. The foreword by Diana M. Foe, uh, I don't know what to say, it was a good foreword. Uh, had some good thoughts to share, talking about steampunk and kind of bringing you in if you didn't know already. Um, it was good. Uh, it was a foreword. I don't know what to say about that. Shedding Skin or How the World Came to Be by Jay Lake. So this story was a bit of a miss for me. It was a rough one to start on. It's basically a retelling of the Adam and Eve story, um, steampunked. Uh, I don't know if you would say it was from the snake's point of view, but it's a mixture of kind of a creation story with specifically Adam and Eve with just what you would imagine a steampunk world will be. So like, you know, it's the inventor or whatever who's God and the snake is just a machine trying to get at the oil. Um, Eve is like one of their daughters who are not of machine. Um, I think it's got some Native American question mark influence because it's got a lot to do with a coyote who is a trickster in it. And I know that the coyote as a trickster plays a role in a lot of religions and ethnicities around the world. But we see that in as far as creation stories more in like Native American tales. Um, it doesn't really explain it very well. 
And in the end, he becomes like, I don't know, god of the mechanics or the, the basically the steampunk giraffe people who are basically robots, but they're alive. I don't know. Um, it, it doesn't really touch, it doesn't really work for me. Um, it was weird. Um, it kind of kept switching things up like it wanted to be a creation story uh, as one would, would tell it. Um, but it didn't really work for me. Um, however, uh, decide for yourselves. It, it is interesting. Some people might like it more than others. If that sounds like something you are interested in, it is the first story of the book, um, and it gets you right in. Hidden Strength by Jamie Go. So this story is amazing. Um, this story could have easily been its own uh, book. Uh, its own steampunk, cyberpunk, whatever book. Um, and one of the reasons why this story is amazing is because it's not a steampunk story. This is a story about relationships. It's about loss. It's about uh, being tough. Um, it's a great example of steampunk doesn't take over. It's not a lot of top hats and gears in your face. It is very much about their relationship that is highly strained. Uh, it is very much about real things, insecurities, um, self-image issues. Uh, it is an amazing story. So basically it's about this guy and his girlfriend and he's in an accident. But So he gets like a steampunk body, like a chest or whatever. Um, I think he has like mechanical hands as well because he has like super strength and it's good for his work. Um, and they're immigrants. Uh, they're Asian immigrants. Uh, it didn't say where, I'm not sure if the places are made up or if my whiteness and lack of geography could could place it. Um, but they're kind of like refugees and they're living on like a refugee place and there was a huge accident. So they're working and he has some serious survivor's guilt which is putting a rift between him and his uh, fiance or wife. I think it's his wife. Um, and then she has some serious issues with well, not issues, but she's dealing with his insecurities and not wanting to talk about it and feeling like they're growing apart, as well as the community feeling like they're growing apart. Um, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, anti, like, death guilt uh, or anti-survivor's guilt from the other people who are upset that he made it, basically. Um, there's a lot of people who are upset that he's a freak, uh, kind of those kind of deals. And it's kind of about them kind of working through it I guess together or both coming um, on their own. It is 100% her. Um, I think it's Sun Yun is is the is the girl. Um, she she is 100% the main character. If you did a whole book from her point of view, dealing with uh, the fact that they're running away and they're refugees, dealing with the fact her husband survived and other husbands and other brothers didn't. Um, dealing with the fact that she's loyal to to him, despite his ness, like his whininess, I, I don't know, uh, PTSD possibly, his severe body image issues, not just in, internally, but like his literal body image issues um, that he's having, and him, him being a general dick about the whole thing, uh, his kind of nihilism and her um, her amazing loyalty throughout it. Uh, this is a really good book. Um, this story was great. It's a great example of how to do a steampunk story in general. Uh, the whole thing about it being basically it is a story. It has nothing to do, has very little to do with his steampunkness. Um, again, clockwork, um, top hats and stuff don't take over. So I, I love it. I suggest it. Um, it alone isn't worth buying the book for, but as you'll see, uh, combined with a few other stories, it is definitely worth buying the book to, to read that one through. Promise by Nisi Shal. This is another one that knocks it out of the park and could have easily been its own book. Um, I think that it should be its own book. This had an amazing premise. It was written really well. It held my interest. Its slow parts and fast parts together um, were fine. Um, I, I really love this. 
Basically, this is another one that is a good example of it's a steampunk story, not about the steampunk elements. It is about a reverend who is a part of, I'm assuming it is like a, um, it is an African empire that, that is kind of built. And it seems to be built by a lot of the slaves who were released after the American Civil War. And they all, and this is kind of an alternate world where a lot of them go back to Africa and they, uh, change and and they colonize and take over and um, unite the African countries and they're fighting against the colonization that is happening. This one specifically is against the French or the Belgians in the Congo. Um, and, but the story is about this guy who is basically elected to be the religious leader of this new empire. And it's because he was a reverend. Um, he's very Christian. However, he is dealing with the fact that as the religious leader, the high priestess or whatever, priest or whatever situation he's holding, he needs to basically honor this, these African religions. And he's dealing with this internal struggle of, is he still a Christian? Is he still a good Christian? How does he uphold this? But he believes in their fight and he believes in their union uh, of this empire and he wants it to succeed so he needs to appease the traditionals and the na and the natives of Africa while also uh, he fights pretty hard to hold on to his Christianity and his uh, and the people kind of running things the ex-slaves or the or the more educated who are more Christianized um, it, a lot of things it talks about are great child labor, um, the the fighting between uh, everything, uh, how they united the tribes, uh, treaties, things like that, how they're distributing resources. I think one of the characters is very much about converting the the, the areas they have captured to Christianity. So that's their kind of the, their purpose in the story, um, and in the end. He has to kind of go through, um, let's say, a change that he struggles with very religiously, and it is amazing. The reason why this could have easily been a whole book is because they talk a lot about kind of the movements that's going on, the war against the French, kind of what each of these factions and divisions of the military are doing and, and working towards to expel the foreigners from Africa or from this area of Africa. Um, it deals with dealing uh, with like per, like the search and rescue mission, uh, again with a bunch of like child slaves slash soldiers or whatever. Um, it deals with this one guy's struggle really well. I think it's a really good premise for a book as a whole while you're dealing with a whole war story and everything. Kind of his um, fight with this, um, and at the end of the book, uh, I mean, at the end of the story, I was left wanting more. Simple as that. Uh, this one combined with the last one that we talked about, this is definitely one of the reasons to uh, buy the book. Um, this is a very good story. Uh, it holds up very well and gives you the worth that that you want it to be. This is very good. The Firebird. Emily B. Catanio. I'm sorry for the pronunciation of these things, by the way. I, I, am, I am very sorry about that. I don't mean to mispronounce them. I'm not doing it as a bit. I'm just very sorry. So this is another really cool one and a concept all on its own that could be made into a full-scale steampunk book. And it really should. It is amazing. This is about, um, in Russia, before the uh, revolution, uh, the, the rich and the aristocracy kind of do augments to their bodies that are very steampunky and clockwork based, giving themselves tails and scales and wings and whatever else they fancied. Um, and then the revolution happens, um, people hate it, uh, they hate the, you know, augmentations, which also uh, pretty much sticks you out as a rich snob. Um, so the revolution happens, and this story takes place from two sisters who survived it. So they are trying to survive getting oil uh, for their 
augmentations basically. Um, some of their augmentations are organs. So one sister has like the lungs that really need the oil because she is sick and she will die if her specialized bejeweled lungs um, are not properly oiled. She will eventually die. Um, in the end, this, uh, without a lot of spoilers, it is very, very good and it kind of ends where I guess a book version of this should begin or this should be like the beginning of the book because it kind of ends in this origin story for a vigilante, a really cool steampunk uh, vigilante kind of fighting against the, uh, the new revolution or the new communist uh, powers of Russia. And um, this, was, this would be a really cool book. Uh, the origin story works, uh, kind of where she's going to go with it works. Uh, I like the steampunk elements and the clockwork elements. I like the setting. Um, this is a very good story and I think in the end would make a very good book. The Little Begum by Indra Pramit Das. This story is cute. I liked it. Uh, this is a good one. Um, it's not one of the best, but I mean I really like this. It's basically about um, two sisters who are uh, kind of in hiding, I'm guessing. One is a mechanic, one is a psychic. And it's about the Taj Mahal being basically a giant mech. And um, it takes psychics in order to operate. So like the clockwork or whatever is so advanced that it's very hard to control. So it takes uh, telekinesis to actually properly pilot it. Um, it's got a good origin story for the Taj Mahal. Um, and it's just a beautiful connection of sisters. Uh, it's a good premise for a book, but I didn't see it bloom enough. Like I don't feel like there's enough there. However, the world, the setting, I, I, would, I would read a full scale book about this or about this world. Um, it's really fun. Um, it's a good story. There isn't really much to talk about or spoil. Uh, it's kind of the origins of the Taj Mahal and kind of talking about telekinesis and the world. Um, I liked it, so that's good. 40 Pieces by Lucien Solban. This story is downright cool. Uh, it deserves to be a full book. Uh, seems to be a trend in the last few stories. Um, it is really cool. Uh, basically, this is a uh, Arabian uh, Indiana Jones without so much Western influence or an Indiana Jones as the head. I really like the Arabian bookseller. I like kind of his reluctance to get going. Um, I kind of like the Westerners push to uh, make Turkey kind of um, full, uh, uh, modernized and mechanized. Um, I do kind of like some of the politics behind it, like the dude's father was pushed out for believing in this and now all the people who pushed him out are the ones really trying to find this. Um, the whole thing is really cool. Uh, it gave me, towards the end, there's, there's this area that gave me really fun Uncharted or Indiana Jones vibes. Um, if they kept rolling with that and just there was a full book with a full exploration and everything, basically more after this, I feel like this is a good beginning, uh, maybe elongating some parts, uh, this would be real fun um, as a full book. And uh, in the end, I really liked it. Even as it was, um, I felt there were some pieces missing. However, I did not hate it. Um, I did end up liking the story. So, uh, Thumbs up. Hadavat Shalom by Lillian Cohen Moore. This is a really fun one. So um, I think it takes place in Italy or in uh, Madrid. I wasn't fully sure. I think it's Italy. Um, it, it is a little bit older, but it's about a girl having these visions about this machine. Um, and uh, it talks a lot about kind of the Jewish refugee struggle. I, I'm not sure if this was uh, made up or if it was steampunked for the book, but it was a very interesting situation um, that 
is in a, like a World War II, you know, the Holocaust that, that we hear about so much. Um, it gave me those same vibes. Um, I like the kind of character interaction. There was a lot of talk about the family and the, and the traditions and things. Um, but eventually it really focuses on her dream, um, the different ways people try to help her kind of overcome it. Um, and in the end, uh, everyone starts believing that she is actually dreaming up a machine that could help liberate their people in a coming war. Um, so it is a really fun, um, it's, it's just a really fun little story. Um, it's n not the best by far. Um, I'm not sure if I just was left behind with the cultural stuff, uh, but in the end, uh, I didn't I didn't dislike it. Um, it just took me a little bit longer to read. Uh, I recommend it. It's it's a good fun little story. Yeah, the Leviathan of Trincomalee by Lucy A. Snyder. This is another one that could be its own book. Like honestly. It could be its own book. This is a great premise. It's basically about this little girl whose father is an inventor inventing the submarine. Um, and she helps him with it. And uh, a meteor crashes. And then things start happening with shipping vessels. So her and her father kind of um, b finish building the submarine to go check what is going on. Uh, this story was fun. Uh, even if you kind of knew where it was going. In the end, um, I liked it. I thought it was a very good premise. Um, and uh, I kind of like how at the end they were like, and this is why we use airships. And I'm like, oh, I like it. I like kind of the explanation of, of now steampunk happens or now steampunk is more viable because of what we saw down there. Um, it's kind of suspenseful. As a full book, you would want this to be more of a thriller, uh, steampunk adventure, um, and kind of switch genres halfway through to like a thriller horror or a suspense horror kind of deal. Um, I really liked it. Um, it has a lot of potential to be a very good steampunk story, and I enjoyed it. I don't know what more to say. The Hand of Sasseti by, oh I'm so sorry, please forgive me, Balogun Ojetaid, I'm, Ojetaid, I'm so sorry. So this one was fun, I guess, yeah, it was fun, um, it just didn't hit the mark for me. Um, I thought, you know, dual battle elephants, would, would would touch me right where it needed to be, um, but it did not. Um, it was confusing at the beginning with, ha like, I think they called the elephant's brother and sister, I think, um, and it was just, it jumped in too quickly for me. Like, I spent so much time confused of how many characters we were dealing with, because first I thought it was just a male who was, like, talking to his elephants, and then... I thought, oh no, there is another person. And then I was like, no, I don't know what I was thinking. It's a female talking to her two elements. And then I finally, I figured out what, out what it was. Um, and I was just left confused. Basically, the story is a brother-sister trio, who uh, bro brother-sister combo, uh, who have two war elephants they call brother and sister. And they are elite warriors, and after their dad or uncle, question mark, it's been a little bit since I read this story in particular, um, goes kind of missing and or goes crazy, fighting a uh, old pharaoh, old kind of like mummy king, who has taken over and is causing trouble. Um, they go off to fight him, and there's a really cool battle scene that uh, I thumbs up, approve of. Um, and they go and fight him with some cool steampunky weapons, uh, some cool things happen. Feels very, um, I wouldn't say mummy-esque in, in the kind of setup. It's more like maybe a Scorpion King, so, um, and I mean that as not just story and premise, but also like whether or not you might like it. Um, I do like it, I do like the world, but I feel like more in the beginning needed to be set up for it to be as confusing as it was. Um, 
I needed to have a little bit more setup, and uh, in the end, it ended well. It left me wanting to read more now that I had gotten the hang of it. Uh, I did want more by the time I reached the end. Um, so take that as, as, as you will, but it is like a, um, a, a, a cool steampunk fight, basically, in Egypt. I, I loved it. Eh, I liked it. The Oh My Gods by Alex Bledsoe. This is another one that is really cool. I don't know if this could be any more than what it is, but I mean a full book about basically the pirate's occupation, basically just elongating that crap. So basically um, this is a really cool uh, little short story. So it is about uh, this tribe on Easter Island and when pirates need a place to stay, they land and they start trying to prepare uh, to uh, fix their boat. And when they discover the natives on the island, they decide to take advantage of them in every way that is terrible. Uh, you know, the, um, the natives are trying to be peaceful, talk their way out of this. They don't really have very much by the way of weapons. Um, however, two ch children have escaped the view of pirates and they discover that there's a secret to the island that even the tribe doesn't know. Uh, spoiler alert, basically giant statue mechs. Uh, it is pretty awesome. Um, I do like it. Uh, it ends pretty good, uh, as, as I would expect. Um, it has a good ending. I do like the, uh, the, the situation. In the end, I'm not sure if this could be a, a book. Um, I definitely would be interested in it. If you ever see Easter Island mech uh, book, I mean, go for it. However, this makes a very good short story and is a very good uh, part of the collection here. I do like it. Um, a plus. The Governess and We by Benjanun. Sri Duang Kao. I'm so sorry. Sri Duang Kao. This is a really cool story. Uh, it's basically about a doll maker who basically makes little automaton dolls um, in Thailand? In Thailand, uh, outside of Bangkok. Um, I do kind of like this story, and at the end, I think it was good and fun to watch. Um, Maybe it could be made into a bigger book. Uh, maybe. Um, at the end of the day, I kind of got my fill of this world. Um, however, I did enjoy it. Uh, it's some good um, lesbian representation in it, uh, which is good. Um, and it was uh, a solid story. Um, you're never really sure where one of the characters lies. You feel for our main character. Um, the world is is all right. The world's pretty cool. I'll, I'll give it that. Um, I feel like it's a bit predictable in where it was going, but I did end up really liking it. I think you could put more at the end of this and kind of do an aftermath of this uh, as a book, and uh, maybe even dealing with different characters. And uh, I think that would be really cool how it would all work out. Um, in the end, this is a good story. Um, basically, automaton maker, um, women automaton maker. Pretty cool. Tengi Ateruru, The Cry of the Morpork. Pip Ballantine, or Ballantine. So this story is awesome. Um, this is not one that I want to be a book per se. This would make an amazing TV show. I really believe so. Uh, if they did do a book of this, I think that it should be a collection of short stories that are basically small investigations. So we can get the full range of this character and uh, all the cool investigations and artifacts and stuff. I love it. 
basically, it is about this half Maori sheriff uh, woman who is doing an investigation, and it sets up a lot of cool stuff in the world. Um, it has just the right amount of magic and airship nonsense. Her dad's an airship pirate or something. Um, her mom was, I'm assuming, English or Australian. Um, it kind of sets up her setting up her own investigation part of the New Zealand um, police constabulary, basically. Um, it kind of sets up what her show would be about, of how her relationship with the natives, as well as, um, and, the, and the Maori people, as well as uh, her trying to make it in, in a man's world, uh, in the western side of things, with the colonizers. Um, I mean, I love the story. Uh, it's a really cool investigation. Uh, it's not really a mystery per se. There isn't something to solve. But at the end of the day, I really like this. I would really like um, an artifact of the week or kind of like a gadget of the week kind of deal. Um, book series, uh, not a series, a uh, collection of short stories that is kind of this. Um, again, would be a great TV show. Um, in the end, I, I was left wanting way more than I got. Um, it's a very good story. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs up. The Construct Also Dreams of Flight by Rashida Loenen Ruiz. So this story is interesting. It's from the point of view of a automaton maid who was kind of left alive after her master's death and kind of keeps everything going. Um, when the family comes to visit, um, they kind of just help them out. Um, in the end they keep talking about the secret project. The secret project is basically a flying machine. Um, in the end one of the masters uh, family members needs to use it to escape and um, the robot maid is kind of like I wish I could fly kind of deal. Um, there really wasn't really much to this. It wasn't a bad story. It was very well written um, and it wasn't terrible. There just wasn't much to it. When it was done, I wasn't left wanting more. It, I was kind of like, yeah, it's done now. Um, and I didn't hate it. It was just, didn't leave much of an impression on me. Um, but that is basically it. That is basically the story. Um, let me know your thoughts on it yourself. Like, uh, let's go read it for yourself and see if you like it. Budo or The Flying Orchid by Tade Thompson. So this story is kind of cool. It's about a guy with his flying machine and his wings and stuff falls from the sky. Uh, he's trying to get home or away um, and he kind of has to deal with this tribe of people. Um, he helps them defend their village <coughs> from invaders um, and then they kind of just want to keep him around so uh, he ends up escaping. Uh, if this was a book, I think it could be a decent book. Um, you need to stay out of his point of view. Um, I think that would be pretty good. And um, in the end, you could just elongate the whole experience. Um, a lot of time jumps are made um, in the, you know, it's a short story. So in the, in the process of words, things that were just cut cut out. Um, in the end, I thought it was a good story. It was fun. Um, hearing about the inventions and some of the fights was fun. Um, I, I thought it was good. Oh my god, have mercy on me. I'm so sorry. The Serazatin Dioramasi Tour by S.J. Chambers. So this story is another one that's fun that, unfortunately, uh, probably because it was a short story, um, some of the nods uh, to the big twist were coming from a mile away, and I knew they were. Uh, this is about a really cool uh, projection automata, uh, it's kind of like a sexy lady automata, that uh, projects to visitors um, a vision of, is it... Casablanca, or is it Constantinople? Constantinople, so it's in Turkey. Um, and it has, uh, it's a really cool premise. 
um, it kind of talks about how people see inaccuracies in the projection and they kind of whisper it to each other. The automaton can pick that up and then actually make adjustments and change those. So what ends up happening is this romanticized Middle East uh, kind of deal um, happens so that tourists can experience this amazing romanticized Middle East that they want to see even as it is modernizing around them and becoming more like home. Um, in the end there's a nice little twist of how the automaton works and some backstory of another character um, and in the end I just uh, I don't know it just didn't seem it's it was exactly as it was it wasn't bad it was just you can't really go anywhere with this um, it was a decent story but I saw a lot of it coming as soon as they introduce this random other character we start going down his life I was like yeah I know where it's going um, yeah uh, in the end I would I would thumbs up I would thumbs up that that was that was a good that was a good story it was just if we're talking about hit or miss that was a foul ball um, it, it was it hit it just didn't go where I, where I think they wanted it to go the Emperor Everlasting by Nayed A. Monroe. So this is one that can 100% be its own book. Um, it was a really awesome setup. They did a lot of world building for the steampunk Inca Empire and I loved it. It is a story that is basically all encompassed in itself but you could blow this up or you could tell another story in this world and it would be amazing. It's basically about a wife to the emperor, one of a thousand or something like that, some crazy number, um, and it is because the emperor is this uh, sarcophagus that is built into this kind of clockwork machine, and um, he has like a uh, pull cord, like a uh, woody pull cord, and he speaks, and that's how they kind of keep the monarchy kind of going after the emperor dies and is mummified and um, he ends up having like a thousand things and it's kind of about the politics that happen afterwards between the person who kind of invented everything that keeps the emperor going and kind of upkeeps him and the, the queen who is still around um, trying to have more power and control um, they're dealing with a possible, I think it's American invasion, so they're, like, there's a lot of stress. Um, they have a lot of cool world building in this. Um, it could easily be expanded into its own book with just descriptions on the world or excuses to take us through the world a lot more. Um, it was very good. Yeah, it, it was very good. Mary Sundown and the Clockmaker's Children by Malone Edwards. This is a story my friend Sam would love. Um, and it was really cool. There was a lot of world building in it. Uh, it definitely stands alone. Uh, it was very unique. Felt very anime. And uh, that's not a bad thing. Um, in the end, I don't think it was a good fit for this story because it takes place in Chicago. It's definitely an American story. I found myself couldn't get over that disappointment when the whole point of the book is to take us away from uh, England specifically and America specifically. Um, but I think it works. It felt very French. I think they were trying to do either a Creole or Louisiana kind of deal. Um, it's got some alternate history in it. It's about a automaton who is t defending the world and can run super fast, her and her sister. Um, and it kind of explains their relationship with the, uh, what is it, the clockmaker? Yeah, the clockmaker. So they are children of the clockmaker. Um, and it, while it's kind of doing all this flashback stuff in the present time, it is this uh, running super fast automaton fighting against a massive mech huge Goliath mech who is laying waste to uh, Chicago like Godzilla and she's fighting against him so it's really cool um, I could see this being its own book not saying it would be good or bad just saying that there's a lot of world building going on in it it's got its own feel that's really good I could see this being a 
like a like a graphic novel really easily. Um, it's very stylized. Uh, in the end, um, it's not my favorite story by far. However, uh, it was solid. It's it's what it is. It is hopefully the the um, writer's vision. Um, it's really cool. It didn't feel steampunk as much as it just kind of felt science fiction-y. Um, but I, I didn't hate it. I loved it. I'll let you decide for yourself. Um, I think a lot of people, other than me, will definitely love this story. It could be a lot of people's favorites. Um, I liked it. Good Hunting by Ken Liu. This story is really cool. I, I really like this story. Um, it is about a, uh, a boy... Uh, who, with his father, do basically monster hunting in Japan, um, and they fight this demon who's like luring men and whatever with men. And uh, and pretty early on, it has an amazing twist uh, where he finds this little fox girl and uh, who's like the demon's daughter or whatever. And uh, she's like, "Why are you killing us?" So it's this whole like you know flip. Like, you are actually the bad guys, and the humans are the ones making shit up to hunt us. We're trying to go about our lives and live our lives. So, uh, when, just when you think that they, like he's going to have to go talk to his dad, his dad kills her mom. So, he helps her survive and kind of get away. So, they have this cute relationship back and forth through the ages. Um... What I really love about this story is a big part of this story is the change between traditional and this magic element to this modernization. And it's a very cool uh, explanation of how modernization kills the magic. This is another one where, another, you know, the bad guy is basically the British uh, modernizing Japan. There's a lot of bad British guys in it. Um, but I really liked how they kind of got back to a steampunk element where the guy basically becomes a genius with steam machines um, in order to help her uh, fulfill her dreams, which I won't spoil too much because this was a very good story, um, very good concept. I really liked it. Uh, another really good example of even if there was no steampunk stuff, I would have loved this, I really would have loved this story um, on its own. Uh, and I really, really like this story. A big thumbs up. And with that, that's basically uh, this book. That is basically Steampunk World. Um, again, all those stories are good. Each one brings something different. Uh, whether I liked it or not, each story is well written. Um, each story brings a completely different side of steampunk and an interpretation of steampunk to the collection. I really like this book. It's a book that made me go back into my other anthologies. I might do a video on uh, Dieselpunk, like the Dieselpunk anthology, um, because that's the one I'm about to finish. And uh, I, I ended up really liking this. Uh, I heavily recommend it. If you read this book, and you like it, let me know your overall what do you feel about Steampunk World in the comments below. But also tell me what your, what's your favorite story and why did you love that story so much. Um, do make sure to preface with uh, spoilers. There might be people who want spoiler free reviews. I know I kind of cut in and out of being spoiler free or not. I'm, I apologize but um, in the end I didn't give away anything that it, it makes these less worth, uh, worth reading. I would definitely go on to Amazon and you know leave a review, leave uh, five stars for this. This is a very good book. This deserves to be in more uh, bookstores and uh, it deserves to make it onto more steampunk recommendation lists. Uh, I know a lot of people try to avoid anthologies when they're recommending things, but I really like this book and I really liked um, many of the stories in it. Uh, and in the end, I really like them all together. Like, it's a very good book. It's a very good recommendation of what steampunk can be. Um, and just drives home that uh, all cultures, all people from all walks of life deserve to be in steampunk. You don't have to be the British snood or the American super cowboy bro uh, to be a part of steampunk. Like, 
Uh, all, the, all cultures can be made into steampunk very well and very cool. Um, and this book drives that home, and I love it. And I would love to see a lot of these concepts and short stories, a lot of these authors who make these great worlds. I would love to see more full-length steampunk novels from them. I think that they'd be really cool. That's why I talked about a lot of them could have been their own book, because honestly, they could, and they really should. We should see more books like these, and um, they're amazing. And with that, that'll be all for this video. It'll be a pretty long book review because I'm basically reviewing all these tiny little stories within. Um, I'm going to be doing a few more book reviews. Let me know if you like these kind of book reviews. Um, I haven't done much already, so uh, I'll be doing a few and sprinkle them, sprinkling them through on the channel. And with that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, like this video to let me know. Uh, if you like it, share it around so that it can find its audience um, for this kind of content. It also helps the channel if you subscribe. Uh, if you like steampunk content, uh, do subscribe. Check out the other content on the channel. Uh, check out the other book review that we did. And with that, I'll call it good. Um, I'm still feeling a little under the weather for my hospital visit, so I will cut this video off short. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.